Hey, what is up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're doing something a little bit different. Now, on the YG Organization website, you might have seen some deck recipe things that Konami basically puts out. There's uh, these different things at different times with different releases or different events or whatever that Konami will put out a deck profile, a like a deck recipe of cards that they suggest playing with themes and things like this. And this was one that they released. They released two deck recipes, a hero list and a sacred beast list for their 20th anniversary pack, uh, like promotional thing. So ultimately, this is the sacred beast deck that they had put out as a deck recipe, the Konami itself, Konami of the OCG. And so I felt like it was an interesting like idea to, since I've never actually played the Sacred Beast theme itself um, with the new cards on this channel, I felt like it was a neat idea to play and test with the, uh, with the OCG Konami built deck recipe, just to see if it even has any sort of coherence of, like, uh, of like whether or not it can sustain plays on a regular basis, whether or not it can like play well, stuff like that, and maybe possibly I will revisit this deck. Uh, in my own build later on, but I felt like this was a neat idea of just playing an OCG uh, like conceptual deck against a TCG formatted thing, and this is going to be a uh, a mixed format thing basically because Chicken Game is banned and uh, Beatrice is at one, as well as Exiton being banned. But those were in the OCG deck recipes, and I want to play it exactly as they were played. So I am going to be playing those cards, whereas the other deck I'm playing against will not be playing them. Uh, in those quantities, so there is that to consider, but I want to know what you guys think about this idea, and I would definitely probably be more uh, more uh, willing to play more of these in the future of playing the uh, the OCG like decks that they, they put out, the deck recipes that you often find on, uh, on the Yu-Gi-Oh! organization website, because I think they're really neat to look at, and I always wanted to like playtest them, and so this was just an excuse to do so. So I feel like it was a, I feel like it was a good idea to maybe potentially go forward with, but if it's something you guys aren't a fan of, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, let's not waste too much time with this. This is basically just a Sacred Beast deck playing the uh, the new support with Dark Summoning Beast and Fallen Paradise. And it's trying to, at least from the looks of it on paper, it is trying to utilize them to the best of its capabilities. But we will see. Let's not waste any more time with this little section of the video, and let us just jump straight into the first game, shall we? And let's see how this, uh, this Konami-provided deck recipe fares. Alright, so going into the first game, I get to start, and I have a pretty favorable opening hand. I have the Dark Greffer combo to put Stygian Street Patrol and Grave, summon my Dark Summoning Beast, and then Terraforming for the Fallen Paradise to allow myself to draw two cards and sort of get back up into the swing of things of where I need to be card-wise. And I do end up with an overall plus one in terms of raw cards with a Haman in Defense Mode. Now, I do normally just summon Haman in Defense Mode because it offers an additional layer of protection to the other monsters on your board because if Haman is in Defense Mode, your opponent can only target it for attacks. So it just seems like the solid turn one option, like the most solid turn one option. But my opponent is able to make uh, Sky Cavalry with frogs. He drew frogs, which are the only real progressive cards in this deck's engine going second. And so it's kind of unfortunate for me, but I'm able to fend off the Sky Cavalry's attack with Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light. And so thus I'm just trying to uh, generate my plays further. My, my Dark Summoning Beast gets Solemn Striked on the following turn. And I Normal Summon Puppet Master accidentally with uh, Sinister Yoshiro. Uh, for some reason, I thought that it would uh, that it would get its effect when it was uh, just normal summon without tribute. But if you read the card, it says this card has to be tribute summoned, and so thus a tribute summon doesn't happen if there's no tribute for a tribute summon. If it was just normal summon without tribute, the puppet master does not get its effect, and that's uh, that's actually something that's unfortunate. I probably should have read the card a little bit more in depth there. But my opponent is able to out the fallen paradise, which thus allows him to out my Haman, and ultimately ends up with an normal Karis and a Sky Calvary of Centauria that I need to answer. And uh, it's it's going to be a problem whether or not I even try to answer these cards because this deck doesn't really function that well when you have a low amount of cards. That's uh, that's just something that is really just the case. And point is that you can't really do anything when you have such a low amount of cards. Even like anything less than three cards is actually pretty hard for you to uh, amount plays with. But so he's able to just not let me do anything. I normally want a puppet master again just for the lulls because I mean my sinister Yoshiro is there. Might as well, right? Uh, but ultimately, we just go straight into the next game after he beats me, and now I get to start again because I lost. So I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be going first a lot potentially in this game, and I open with the same combo. I open with Fallen Paradise, a Greffer, and a uh, and a Dark Summoning Beast, putting Haman on the board. But this time I do not have the Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light 
available to fend off something like Sky Calvary. So I'm just hoping he doesn't draw frogs, because like I said, those are the only progressive cards to make plays turn two, going second, that this deck runs. But he has frogs again, so he's able to make Sky Calvary and put the Haman back in my hand. And so I end phase call the Haunted for Dark Summoning Beast, and I'm going to try and use it very start of my turn, while I have like some form of turn player priority. But it gets striked, and so at this point I just have to use the Dark Graffer and just do things, and I use Dark Summoning Beast banishing itself, searching Uriah because I haven't escaped in the Dark Dimension that I've drawn. And so my thought process is I'll be able to cool, use escape, bring back my Dark Summoning Beast, tribute it for Raviel, and then if I draw another trap I'll be able to summon Uriah. But he gets to make Obabinia on his following turn and then search Olenoids and use Olenoids to MST my escape from the Dark Dimension and validating that play line and structure. So at this point he knows what two cards in my hand are. It's a Uriah that I searched and Haman that he bounced. And so basically all he really needs to do is negate a key card and which with a tree toad with a totally awesome it's very easy for him to do so as well as the fact that he summons dupe frog and so there's not really anything i can do as well as those dark eruptions are both dead because the tar summoning beast got banished from my graveyard and escape from the dark dimension banishes the card if it's destroyed instead of sending it to grave like it doesn't just destroy the card it banishes it so it puts it back where it started there would have been a little bit of a differentiating, differentiating like play option there if it did destroy it but ultimately there still would have been no plays for me to make so there is that now Next game, I go first again, and I just don't even open anything. I open Dark Greffer, and like I just I'm missing Dark Summoning Beast. That's the only card I'm missing. And so he makes a totally awesome, and I use the uh, Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light to try and save the Greffer because it's something I really feel like needs to happen. And ultimately, he just takes it, which is fine. I did save the Greffer, but now he has it, which he can use to trigger his own cards. And that is uh, that is the uh, the problematic thing that uh, ends up being the case is that he's able to use it as a free card to trigger his traps. Now he uses the Book of Moon Trap on my Dark Summoning Beast, I get really fortunate and draw it for turn during the next turn. And then so I use Greffer discarding Raviel to send Street Patrol and banish Street Patrol to uh, to try and summon it, but it gets Book of Moon, so not really anything I can do about that. I would have definitely loved to have had the Fallen Paradise uh, play live, but ultimately there's not really I can anything I can do about that, and he just starts forcing plays through, forcing plays down my throat, making a totally awesome and an anomaly Karis, which are very two very strong defensive lines and during his last turn he resolved so many draw cards he resolved a Pekaya, a reckless greed and a desire so like he resolved one of every card in his deck that says draw two cards <laughs> and i think that's absolutely ridiculous and so during this turn he just starts his turn doing a lot of things negating a card with totally awesome and then resolving multiple recklesses bringing back multiple traps and then revealing off a normal Karis and adding a card to hand so at that point is just way too much advantage for me to deal with and i just scoop and say let's go to the next game but going into the next game i open with greffer and a Street Patrol and Dark Summoning Beast play, but I do not have access to Fallen Paradise. And I also get Max Seed, so he gets to draw a couple of cards, and so he starts his next turn with Frogs. I'm just like, damn it, every time I summon this Haman in defense mode, he has Frogs to answer it, meaning he has Sky Calvary of Centauria, but at least this time I have the Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light again, which I'm able to use to fend off the Sky Calvary. But, so I'm not able to really do anything as a huge follow-up because I don't have a lot of cards, because I don't have access to Fallen Paradise. That would have been a very good draw, but unfortunately we did not get there. We drew a Summoner Monk instead, and I use it to just set up my graveyard for future plays, as well as uh, as well as just sending a Farfa to get the Sky Cavalry off the board, so it's not just a clear cut out to my Haman. And I turn them all to attack mode, and I just uh, just go for uh, damage, basically, putting him at 15. But now, his next turn, he's able to resolve Double Reckless, and he's able to start putting traps on the board because he makes an Opabinia with trap under it, so he can search trap. And ultimately, it's just not in my favor going from here because he has Ronin Toad in life, he's able to make an Anomal Icarus, and it's just, uh, oh man. I definitely like wanted to play against this deck specifically, one because I haven't played against it in a while for a video, but also I felt like this deck was, while it's one of the harder matchups when it gets rolling because it does things like this where like one turn just becomes really explosive and it starts playing all of its cards, and it becomes really, really hard to manage all the resources that it snowballs, when it's trying to set up outside of frogs, the deck is very slow based, so I felt like it was going to be the best chance that this deck that I'm playing would have against it, because it gives you sort of a free turn to set up, especially if you're going first. If your opponent doesn't open frogs going second, they literally just set cards and pass, and so you can at least try to make plays that way, but ultimately it's just, it's not the biggest, uh, the biggest appealing allure that I'm having here with this deck. Like, I'm not, I'm not really having the most, uh, the most successful times as if you, uh, as if you could not tell. But anyway, going into the last game, I get to start again. So I've started every game in this video. I'm just trying to win the redemption game at this point. And so my hand is kind of cool, it's kind of weird, but unfortunately I get Max Seed. And I have the play where it's Apprentice Illusion Magician 
with Mally, where you can summon Beatrice and since Daiju Street Patrol to Grave, and then summon the Dark Summoning Beast out of my hand and summon Haman. Now this hand would be so much better if I had Fallen Paradise instead of that Dark Magician, because I could have searched Dark Magician, but uh, ultimately it's just, it's whatever. The fact that I got Max Seed is a big factor here, because while he already had Frog's access in his hand to answer the Haman again, <laughs> he gets to get more cards, which means that he actually opens with four Frogs, with two Swap Frogs, a Droop and a Ronin, and so he's able to make an Opabinia so he can play traps from hand, and then make another Opabinia with a trap under it so that he can search traps, and then he outs my entire board, putting my Beatrice face down so he, I can't far for his Sky Calvary, and then uh, and then Karma cutting my uh, Haman, and then a Sky Calvarying my Beatrice, and attacking me twice with Augusto Phoenix is a very strong play string, and then he has Reckless set so that he's able to next turn search with Opabinia and also have Reckless following it up to go back to just a ton of cards if anything happens to his monster lineup. But I get very fortunate with the string of uh, string of draws that I get. I get a Terraforming for Chicken Game, and then off the Chicken Game, I get a Dark Summoning Beast, which I tribute over my last Malicious to summon, and then tribute for Raviel. But ultimately, Raviel cannot attack this turn because of Dark Summoning Beast Restriction, or else I would have definitely been able to attack over the Opabinia with the trap under it, and at least been in a little bit better of a position game-wise, but still the Sky Calvary just gets to banish it, and I can't really answer that. And that just ultimately just sets the game straight into me getting 5 would So, <laughs> like, this deck is definitely a really interesting looking thing on paper. And these new support cards are definitely really cool and they function well. But, like I said in the review video I did for them, they are very much way too late. Now, if these cards had come out in 2006, I could have seen them potentially maybe being some form of problem because the game was a much slower paced thing back then, and things like this would have definitely been rewarding to play. Like, things that cards that just say draw to and like they add protection to cards, definitely. 100%. But other than that, as it stands right now, the cards, even against a slow to start deck like Paleozoics, it just uh, it just doesn't seem like it's uh, it's too optimal, unfortunately, which is a, definitely a shame. I think that there were definitely some of the more unique cards that could have been printed, but they were just printed way too late. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, what you think about the deck, what you think about me playing these OCG deck recipes and stuff like that against TCG decks, and if you like that sort of nonsense, sure, be sure to let me know. But if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. Check out links on the screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus uploads over there, so if you can't find some other videos that you'd like, I would be very, very heavily surprised. But as I already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, and as always guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.